What's up everybody, Patrick here, welcome back. And moving on with the course, we're now moving on to the next section called polynomial equations. And polynomial equations, very similar to polynomial functions, a lot of the tools we went over in the previous sections we're gonna be using now. And the thing that differentiates polynomial equations is that they're always gonna have this equal sign here. So they'll always contain that equal sign and you basically have to solve for X that satisfies the equation, that basically makes the left side equal to the right side. And there's a certain process, certain way to do it. So I thought we'd start with two examples. So this first example, we have x cubed minus 3x squared minus 6x plus 8 equals 0. So the first thing to recognize is that there's this equal sign. So we know we're dealing with a polynomial equation. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that you bring over everything to one side, where on the opposite side, you're just left with a 0. So notice in this case, that's already done for us. Notice how all of the variables, all of the constants are on the left side, the zero is on the right side, but a lot of times that's not gonna happen. So for example here, notice how we have variables and constants on both the left side and the right side. So once we're dealing with that example, we're gonna have to bring everything over to a certain side to make sure that there is zero left on the opposite side. So moving back to this first example here, x cubed minus three x squared minus six x plus eight equals zero. How are we going to solve for the x that satisfies the equation? So we basically have to find an x value or multiple x values that make the left side equal to the right side. So basically that make the left side equal to zero. Well, once you've gone through the process of bringing over everything to one side where the opposite side is equal to zero, notice in this question it's already done for us, what you have to do is you have to factor that polynomial function on the one side. So notice how we have this x cubed minus 3x squared minus 6x plus 8. And because it's a degree greater than 2, what we're going to have to do is use factor theorem. So let's, uh, let's forget about the 0 for now and let's label this polynomial function on the left side here as f of x. So we got x cubed minus 3x squared minus 6x plus 8. And what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to find an x value that makes this equal to 0. So we have to do trial and error. So if we plug in f of negative 1, if we plug in negative 1 for all these, that will not give us 0. However, if we plug in 1, that will give us 0. So from this, we know that x minus 1 is a factor. So then what we have to do is we have to take that x minus 1 and see how many times it divides into that f of x that we labeled up here, the dividend x cubed minus 3x squared minus 6x plus 8. So how many times does x go into x cubed? Well, x squared times x squared times x is x cubed minus x squared subtract, we end up getting a negative 2x squared here. We'll bring this 6x down. x goes into negative 2x squared, negative 2x times. So then we'll have negative 2x squared, negative 2x times negative 1 is positive 2x. Subtract, negative 8x plus 8. x goes into negative 8x, negative 8 times. And then when we multiply, the negative 8 by the terms in the divisor, notice how we get a remainder of 0, which makes sense because x minus 1 is a factor, so the remainder should be 0. So basically, we have factored this polynomial into x minus 1 and then this quotient here. So let's erase this. So we got x squared minus 2x minus 8. And then notice how we're now left with a quadratic to factor, which is pretty easy to factor. We can use decomposition. And, in, and uh, when you do that, you end up getting x minus 4, x plus 2. So this polynomial function factors into this. So going back to our equation, 
we can now substitute this factored form for this polynomial function on the left side. So we got x minus 1, x minus 4, and x plus 2 equals 0. So now, notice how this is very similar to when we were finding the x-intercepts. Basically, we had a function and we made it equal to zero. We made all the y values equal to zero to solve for the x-intercepts. Same process here. So basically, this is going to equal zero when one of these brackets equals zero. So we have different cases. When does x minus one equal zero? Well, that will happen when x is equal to one. When will x minus 4 equal 0? That will happen when x is equal to 4. And then when will x plus 2 equal to 0? That will happen when x is equal to negative 2. So remember, we're solving for x that satisfies the equation. Well, the x values that satisfy this first polynomial equation we were given is x is equal to 1, x is equal to 4, x is equal to negative 2. Moving on to the second example, we have x to the power of 4 minus 8x squared plus 2x cubed plus 38, and it equals 2 plus 2x cubed plus 5x squared. So notice we're dealing with a polynomial equation because of this equal sign here. So we're basically going to have to solve for x that satisfies this equation that makes the left side equal to the right side. So notice how in this example, we have terms on both sides of the equal sign. So as I mentioned before, first thing you want to do, you want to bring all the terms over to one side and make sure you have one polynomial equation on the left side equaling zero on the right side or vice versa, a polynomial equation on the right side equaling zero on the left side. But for now, in this example, let's bring all of these terms on the right side over to the left side. So we'll have all the terms written out on the left side again. And then when we bring those terms on the right side, this positive 2 would come over, it would become a negative 2. This positive 2x cubed would come over, that would become a negative 2x cubed. And then this 5x squared would come over, that would become a negative 5x squared and then that's going to equal zero. So now what you want to do is you want to simplify this left side here by netting out any like terms. So notice how x to the power of 4, there's no other x variable to the power of 4 here, so we can rewrite that as is. What about uh, this negative 8x squared? Well, notice this negative 8x squared and this negative 5x squared, those are like terms. So when we net those out, we end up getting negative 13x squared. Notice that this negative 2x cubed, or this positive 2x cubed and this negative 2x cubed, those net out to zero, so we can forget about those. And then this positive 38 minus 2, that nets out to positive 36 and we still have that zero on the right side. So now notice how we have a simplified polynomial on the left side equaling zero. And now we can do what we did in the first example, we can just factor this polynomial here. Now there are multiple ways to factor this. You can use the factor theorem. However, you can also recognize that this resembles a quadratic that's factorable because we have this x to the 4 and x squared. So what you can do is you can add a variable m and let it equal to x squared. So this x to the 4 we can rewrite as x squared squared minus 13x squared plus 36 equals 0. Now we can sub in this new variable m that we're working with for x squared. So we'd have m squared minus 13m plus 36, that's equaling zero. Then notice how this is just a quadratic that factors smoothly into m minus nine, and then m minus four. That's still gonna equal zero. And now we can bring back that x squared for the m. So we'd have x squared minus nine, x squared minus four, equaling zero. And then this factors into x minus three, x plus 3, x minus 2, x 
plus 2. And that is equaling 0. So that's probably the quickest way to do it. However, sometimes it's difficult to recognize that you can do that, that you can turn this into a quadratic if we introduce a variable. So the other way you can do it is you can also let this polynomial equal f of x. So we have x to the 4 minus 13x squared plus 36. And you can go ahead with the factor theorem. So you can try out different values. You can try out positive 1, negative 1, positive 2. And when you try out positive 2, that will equal 0. So you know x minus 2 will be one of the factors, which is what we got down here as well. So then you can take this x minus 2 and then divide it into this f of x here. So you'd have x to the 4. Remember, you have to put a placeholder for x cubed because there's no x cubed there. So it'd be plus 0 x cubed minus 13 x squared. Then you have to put a placeholder for x as well. You'd have 0x plus 36. And then you can divide this in, and then you'd end up with a remainder of 0 and a cubic function here. And then you do the factor theorem on the cubic function. Keep going down the process, basically factoring this, and you'll end up getting this at the end. So you can do that for practice on your own. Just make sure that you are getting this answer. It's factoring into x minus 3 times x plus 3 times x minus 2 times x plus 2. Okay. So once you get to here, once you have a factored polynomial equal to 0, what you do is you just make the brackets equal to 0, each of the brackets. So you have different cases. So we'd have x minus 3 equals 0. Well, that happens when x is equal to 3. So that's one solution we'll have x plus 3 equaling 0. That happens when x is equal to negative 3. That's another solution. We'll have x minus 2 equaling 0. That happens when x is equal to positive 2. That's another solution. Then we'll have x plus 2 is equal to 0, and that happens when x is equal to negative 2. So that's another solution. So we have four solutions to this polynomial equation that we were given. And you can always check your answers if you have time. What you can do is you can plug each of these x values into the original polynomial equation. So you plug it in. So let's say we take 3. If you plug in 3 for the x values on the left side, we would get some kind of figure. Then we would plug in an x value 3 on the right side, and we should get that same value that we got on the left side. The left side and the right side should always equal for these x values. So if you do have time, there are ways to check your answers with polynomial equations. It takes a little bit of time, but then you can be sure that you got the right answer. So pretty simple process using a lot of tools from polynomial functions. Basically with polynomial equations, what you want to do, bring everything over to one side, make sure that it equals zero, factor that left side, and then take your factors, make them each equal to zero, and then you get your x values that satisfy the equation. Then check your answers with those x values, making sure the left side equals the right side.